Noble's search had run dry. He ran and flew all over Fell City looking for Brady Benz and the mercenary, but he had no luck. These guys were experts when it came to making a getaway and staying out of sight. Andrew had officially tired himself out. So, he had come back home to his apartment and plopped down on his couch, still in costume. He pulled his shades off and tossed them to the side, not really caring where they landed. His eyes slowly closed as he let out a deep breath. I can't remember the last time I saw you working so hard. A female voice said from behind Andrew. His eyes shot open and he exhaled sharply in surprise. He jumped up and turned to look for the person who had spoken to him. But he saw no one. What? He muttered quietly. Why are you pushing yourself? The young woman asked softly. Again, the young hero spun about in an attempt to find the one who was speaking to him. Who are you? What do you want? He asked firmly, his eyes darting around the room. Who am I? The voice said, sounding a bit wounded. Have you already forgotten my voice, Andrew? Where are you? Show yourself! He demanded fearlessly and then turned around once more, but this time he saw a beautiful blonde standing only inches in front of him. I'm right here, babe, the young woman said as she placed a petite hand on his heart. As always, she added, her blue eyes looking up at Andrew's flabbergasted expression. Andrew struggled to even form a single word upon seeing the girl. She looked to be about nineteen years of age, five foot five, and slim figured. She had light skin, and she was clad in nothing but a white sundress. Her shoulder length, wavy blonde hair just barely draped over her right side of her face, momentarily. But then, Noble took a hand and moved the locks behind her ear. You're not here. Sure I am, she said with a tender smile. The young blonde embraced the costume teen, a faint grin still on her lips. Now are you going to tell me why you've been pushing yourself so hard lately? I'm not pushing, Fantasist replied. Noble, you can't lie to me, she stated. Now tell me the truth, she said, and then released her grip on Andrew. She backed up a little, so she could look him in the eyes, her expression now rather glum. Is it because of me? No! Noble spat out quickly, and then turned away. Well, maybe a little. Andrew, you can't let that affect you like this. You mustn't let it change who you are, she said sadly. Her voice still so soft. How? Andrew asked. How? He yelled as he spun around to look at her. How am I supposed to do that? How can I let what happened not affect me? How is something like that not supposed to change me, Angie? Tears welled up in the hero's eyes as he continued. You're dead. And she bowed her head sorrowfully. Yeah. She looked back up, her eyes overflowing with tears. Now you need to accept that. Have you? Have you even tried? Is that why you keep pushing yourself? Are you hoping that one of these days, if you beat enough bad guys, maim enough crooks, that somehow I'll come back? No one looked away again. He knew that what Angelica was saying was entirely true. And he wasn't ready to face it. It doesn't work that way, babe. I'm sorry. You need to get past this now. As Angelica turned away, Noble gingerly grabbed hold of her hand. I did save you, 
you know, he stated weakly. Angie just looked at him in confusion. Not when it mattered, but afterward. In my head. Every night, I relive it. And I do something different. And I save you. Tears roll down Angie's cheek, one after another. And she smiled at no one. A couple seconds. Thank you. Then just like that, she was gone. The hallucination now over. <sighs> Noble released a trembling breath as he fought against the overwhelming sadness. But seconds later, he found himself on his hands and knees, weeping. It had happened again. Not long after the horror that was the malice bombing aftermath, Andrew began to hallucinate. Time after time he saw his dead allies and friends, and even spoke to them, just as he had spoken to Angelica a moment ago. How long would this go on? He often wondered if there was any cure for what he was going through. He hated this. Seeing the fallen guardians had hurt him more than anything, and yet, deep down, he silently wished these hallucinations wouldn't end. He wanted to keep seeing Angie, just as she was. He wanted to be able to see her, feel her, and talk with her. Before Angie died, he didn't know it was possible to miss someone so badly. No one was a changed man, and not for the better. Tonight looks like a cold one, the moon decides to show. Dance along the ocean, none of us will know. None of us will know. This is the end of it, it's time for us to go Back to where we started, back to what we know Back to what we know I saw you working so hard. Good marshmallow. <laughs> Why are you pushing yourself? A little softer. Give me a little more marshmallow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>